Okay, welcome everyone um, to this Friday's Tech Talk. Uh, my name is Einstein Milan. I am a software architect at Whitefront. And today I'll be speaking about introduction to natural language processing. Um, so let's first give everyone a brief look at what an, uh, an online tech talk is. And it's just basically a, a space where we share our knowledge, stories or experiences on things that we've done research on or subjects that we find interesting. Uh, so if you haven't done so already, go ahead and uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, give us a like. So let's start by the definition of uh, natural language processing. And it's basically a field of artificial intelligence that focuses on the interaction between computers and humans through natural language. This enables us to understand, interpret, and generate human language in a way that's both useful and meaningful. Why is natural language processing important? So it facilitates, as I said before, the communications between computers and humans. It allows us to do data analysis to do, um, and to do applications such as virtual assistants, chatbots, sentiment analysis, and much more. And of course, uh, ChatGPT. This is a representation of um, analytics done, to, done via natural language processing. And this is basically sentiment analysis. As we can see in the red, this basically refers to a negative sentiment. Uh, gray refers to a uh, neutral sentiment and the blue bars represent uh, positive sentiment based on the on the analytics engine. Here are some of the some key components of natural language processing, and they're basically um, segregated into syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. Uh, syntax refers to the Google rules governing structure of language, such as grammar and sentence structure. And these can all vary from language to language. So it's not that the rules don't apply for, say, English and Spanish. And I, I believe you've seen ChatGPT can do many languages at a time, telling us that it's a very complex and elaborate model. Semantics, on the other hand, refers to the meaning of words and phrases in context. So uh, um, for all those of us that speak Spanish, banco can be, at least in Venezuela, sorry. There, there are words that have the same meaning is what I mean to say in the same language, and they may have the same sound, but they may, they may portray different context and meaning. So semantics deals with a way to do that. And um, that way, the sentiment analysis models, for example, can know the difference between sarcasm, that's which is one of the most difficult parts of NLP is differentiating um, actual meaning versus sarcastic meaning. And semantics deals with that area and pragmatics, pragmatics, which is the use of language and context of, to convey meaning. And here's a brief, brief comparison of semantics versus pragmatics. Um, by the way, if I'm going too fast, and if you, if you want to stop me, feel free to do so. I, I kind of like, like to keep presentations as an open discussion, even though we'll have questions at the end. So some techniques of natural language processing our tokenization, which is breaking down text into individual words or tokens, stemming and levitization, which is reducing words to their root forms. Part of speech, tagging, which is assigning grammatical categories to words, and named entity recognition, which is identifying and classifying entities like names, dates, and locations. So um, NLP and machine learning. Uh, for those of you that uh, have not had an introduction to machine learning, there are basically two, two huge, two big categories in, on how machine learning is applied. And one is through supervised learning and the other is through unsupervised learning. For brief uh, explanation, supervised learning refers to systems in which, in which we give feedback to the system, letting it know when things are accurate and when its predictions are accurate or its classifications are accurate versus un, this versus uns, uh, unsupervised learning, which basically functions as a classification model by lumping data that it, that it believes is should be lumped together, for example. And that can that's usually more useful for 
system diagnostics, anomaly detection, so on and so forth. One question on Einstein. Sure. Uh, can, can you go back to the to the before slide? And yeah. um, uh, do you know which technique is used by ChatGPT? I do not know which, but I would certainly say since it's a huge language model, I believe they would probably employ all these techniques for various features which they're engineering. I know it's a huge model, so certain features when you're engineering them require different approaches. Um, for example, if we, if not for this, for light NLP, but for other types of models such as regression models, we have hot encoding for some features. Um, so there's various techniques that are applied in each case. But I would, I, would, I would dare to say that they use probably all of them, if not more than the ones displayed here. Okay, you know, and, and are they, sorry. Sorry, go ahead, yeah. No, and are they able to detect sarcasm or not yet? It's, it's a growing field, but that is the most difficult one, certainly. I know Twitter has been having difficulty with it. I've, been work, I've worked myself with sentiment analysis models, mm -hmm. which are not very successful in the score sections for, for false positives and for classification of sentiment. So it's an area, it's a, an area that's an evolution and it's probably one of the most in high demand for, for work to be done. But detecting sarcasm is not easy, even for humans. So <laughs> sometimes I, I've, been, I've been told a joke before and then I didn't know there was sarcasm. I've been taking it literally sometimes. So even for us, it's, a, it's a not a hundred percent effective. So. <laughs> yeah, Interesting. but I'm assuming we'll reach a point in which computers will be able to detect sarcasm better than humans. We've seen these cases in the medical field, for example, for detecting tumors. And uh, recently, yesterday, I'm sorry to go on off on the weeds, but I'm fascinated by the subject. Um, I saw that ChatGPT was able to, through MRI scans, predict, predict what the person was thinking with a certain degree of accuracy. This can be scary, but it's also interesting. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Here's a flowchart showing the process of, of applying various NLP techniques to a piece of text. So this is related to your question, Hedda. You can apply various techniques throughout your pipeline for, for um, NLP analysis. And you can apply semantic rules as well as syntax rules along your path to generate uh, uh, proper outcomes. Here are some popular NLP algorithms and models. There's bag of words, there's TF, IDF, and there's word embeddings. So bag of words re refers to a simple representation of text as a bag of words disregarding grammar and word order. TF, IDF, is a statistical measure to evaluate the importance of a word in a document or corpus. And word embeddings, representing words as vectors, this is super interesting, in a high dimensional space to capture their meaning or relationship. Um, here is word embeddings as vectors. So basically we're trying to quantify or put in a way that a, the, the computer or a, or a binary system can understand um, how to classify these things. It's, uh, it, it would be interesting to see how, how probabilistic systems such as um, non-binary systems, such as quantum computing can help to decode these uh, language models. And we should be seeing some pretty fascinating outcomes within the next five years. Deep learning for natural language processing. Um, we have recurrent neural networks, long short-term memory, transformer models. Now, again, this is an introductory uh, 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 presentation. The field is huge. It's ever growing. So there's a lot of, a lot of topics to discuss. And um, so yeah, uh, neural networks with loops enabling to process the sequences of data. Neural networks are huge um, for these types of things. Long short-term memory, which is a greater recurrent, advanced, um, RNN, I can't remember what that, uh, what that means. Architecture is designed to handle long-term dependencies, long-range dependencies. Um, and there's transformer models. Sorry, my watch. There's AI for you. 
Um, there's transformer models or groundbreaking architecture that uses self-attention mechanisms to process text more efficiently. It's uh, basically a feedback loop for our models. And here's a visual representation of, uh, of a transformer. So we have Optimus Prime is a cool robot and it goes through a, a certain uh, degree of transformations. It, uh, it processes states, it decodes, and then you have it in a uh, different language, for example. And this is more close to what Google Translate can do. Not only has to translate words, but has to put it in, in a shape, in an order, in a, in, a, in a context that whoever is reading in a different language would be able to understand. So this is how these transformations are useful in conveying meaning in different encodings or languages. Some applications of natural language, uh, natural language processing and use cases is virtual assistants, such as Alexa, Siri, and Google Assistant, chatbots, such as customer support, e-commerce, e and social media chats, media chatbots, sentiment analysis, um, which is analyzing the sentiment related to the figure I showed uh, uh, earlier in this presentation for social media posts, reviews, and comments, and machine learning translation. So it's just translating speech between different languages. So here's a very brief uh, depiction of uh, some use cases as well for natural language processing. Um, and then uh, NLP in action, ChatGPT. Um, I'm sure the introduction is uh, undue. So we all know what ChatGPT is. We all know that it's, that it's an advanced AI model. Um, and it's based on the GPT architecture. How it works, it's trained on, uh, over a large data set of text uses deep learning techniques and self-attention mechanism to the things we mentioned briefly today to generate human-like responses to text inputs. And uh, ChatGPT can be used for tasks such as conversational, conversational AI, summarization, question answering, language translation, slide presentations. <laughs> Some of the benefits ChatGPT demonstrates the potential for natural language processing to create more sophisticated and natural interactions between humans and computers. And uh, we're only beginning to scratch the surface. Um, as we can see, it can recognize patterns. It has plugins, so you can feed it more data. It allows you to expand upon its existing, existing model. And uh, we've seen Bloomberg and other companies specialize the GPT architecture for, for example, um, financial markets, predictions, and uh, financial information suggestions and recommendations. So I believe this language model is only the, the gatekeeper to much more advanced uh, Skynet type of uh, intelligence, hopefully not as bad. I like to watch the Terminator movies. So does anyone have any questions? or comments or things that they would like to discuss. Hearing none. Well, uh, um, thank you for your time. Yeah, yeah. yeah one. No, just, just a comment. Uh, it's, it's like, I, I'm I'm not scared why, why they seem similar to Sheldon, <laughs> while they don't understand sarcasm. Uh, I'm afraid that maybe when Nadra's language processing makes more progress, they will be more sarcastic than human beings even. That's that's a little bit scary if, if they are like smarter than us. And... Certainly, yeah. Or we could have a tool, an app. You'd be like, excuse me, what did you say? And he's like, the person was being sarcastic. <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. That would be really helpful for meetings. Yes, likewise, likewise. Sometimes I don't take a pun. So anyways, uh, if anyone has more comments or questions, yes. I sure. Uh, Einstein, um, do you think that there is some type of app that can translate real time using this technology? For example, this meeting, uh, I don't know, maybe subtitles that are in different languages or something similar like that. 
Do we have an, yes. something similar to that right now, or is it still in progress? It's wonderful that you're asking that question because there is an upcoming tech talk from mm -hmm. uh, one of the architects in our team, Guille, I'm sure most of you know him. And he developed a uh, some scripts where he takes these tech talks, as you have aptly mentioned, and he, he develops a transcript out of every word we're saying. And that's going to help us with our CEO. And that's going to help us with many things to get the exposure that we need at Yprompt. But yes, there, we have we actually have technologies, and we're implementing those technologies in a, you know at the present time, and that's just scratching the surface. Cool. So I thank you. Suggest that I everyone know about that that we were working on that. Nice. Yeah, I would I would really uh, suggest that everyone attends these talks because the upcoming sub subjects we'll be discussing is going to be around are going to be around architecture, machine learning, all the new stuff. And it's wonderful for us as a company to rally around that and uh, be competitive um, by leveraging these technologies we have at our disposal. Cool. Thanks. No, thank you. Wonderful question. Uh, I had a question slash comment. Um... I saw some, oh, some YouTube videos and it's pretty interesting the use cases that people are, are using ChatGPT for. I was wondering, like on your experience, uh, how have companies been adopting those solutions? So for example, uh, companies can use like their wiki or internal knowledge base to ask questions. And that's a very interesting case for onboarding like new people that are coming to a, a company and make questions much easier than searching through a big knowledge base. Uh, how do you think companies are going to, to adapt these technologies and are people like really thinking about using it or is it just early stages still? Marcelo, you have just give, given me an idea for, for the future. We could have some automated uh, processes in Slack for uh, new engineers on on board with the company, that's, and I believe companies are are jumping on the on, on the wave. Um, certainly, we can convey meaning now. We can talk to a robot. It can answer most frequently asked questions. Um, I believe a lot of companies are using it not only for that. Um, we have com competitors which are using, for example, different program programming languages. And we're able to port their code into Python. Say, we're, say some, for example, someone's using Julia, and then we need code in Python. We can port it in a matter of seconds. Or um, uh, for uh, data analysis, especially around deduplication or uh, certain things that need uh, uh, augmented natural language recognition. So it's something that we definitely want to be aware of, and we certainly want to take advantage of us if we don't want to be left behind. A lot of companies are jumping on board with this in every way. Yes, makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. So I strongly suggest everyone jump on the ChatGPT bandwagon with a grain of salt. It's not a perfect technology. Be mindful that the models have been trained for ChatGPT 4 till 2021. So some of the code it generates for you, some of the solutions it generates for you, it is uh, in your, it behooves us to evaluate and test the code. And then there's also the matter of confidentiality. You, we should not be running our clients code through ChatGPT as per our contract, yeah. but we can generate code. Yeah, it's also the case that Azure has a service that's kind of ChatGPT, right? It's the same kind of model technology of open AI, but adding like the cloud, uh, how can I say, like audit models or the cloud, uh, basically uh, chat GPT for enterprise level where it's safe to use our data and they won't collect it. But I'm not sure if that's the case. It would be interesting to do some uh, research on it. Yeah, I think it, uh, incognito mode just came out and it allows, it guarantees that your data will not be re recollected, but we've seen how that goes. When they say they don't collect your data, they still collect it and head it out. So yeah, it's something It's something new and disruptive and we should leverage it, but always be mindful of the, of the caveats 
to completely really completely relying on these technologies. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, about this, but I think that GitHub Copilot, uh, yes, been around uh, some time, uh, has uh, solved that. Like they they don't steal your. They're yeah, supposedly yeah. not not stealing your your logic or your business, although they already have all our businesses. Um, I think that Copilot has that 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 solved. Not sure. Uh, but I think it's safer than using right now ChatGPT. Yes. So it's like when the calculator came out and people were using the abacus, kind of. We were still engineers, but we have tools that make our work easier and more efficient. For sure. So as you can see, I find this subject fascinating. And uh, I, I thank you everyone for your questions. If there's no more questions, we can wrap it up. If there's more, I would love to keep discussing this. <laughs> Thank you, Einstein. Nice talk. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Thanks for, for stopping by. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.